You're now tuned into Empowered Minds Podcast. You got going on with hey, your host, no troubles won't last. I kill lost your core. Are you ready to be empowered? Well then, let's if go. It's gonna make you stronger. Whatever it is, it won't last much longer. Oh, oh, no, won't last. Last. no, 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 Jen ain't lie, man, many nights I've been broke Sometimes I much rather die And I see I ain't, I ain't saying I love it But I can't fathom the thought And I haven't enough of it I wanna be Good evening and welcome to Season 1, Episode 6 of Empowered Minds And we're calling this one Script Analysis Now, today what we're gonna do is Well, let me back up a second Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some aspects of script analysis because um, I want to tell you where some of my inspirations came from. And, and today, my inspiration came from uh, my wife and I sitting in a local diner. It was a new spot that we found and I was taking on the ambiance. And during the conversation today, as we ate at that restaurant, which makes about our third or fourth time literally this week eating in that restaurant, and uh, my wife happened to get in the conversation about me acting uh, with the young lady who had some relevance of who I was. And I began to just start looking at everything was going on. And, and, and I also thought about um, an interview that I saw about a day or two ago where um, the interviewer was interviewing an actor, a professional actor, had been on several television shows, and they were talking about script analysis and um, character development and a whole lot of other things. But those things stuck out to me. And I said, wow, there's a lot of character development going on when there should be um, maybe an overdose or an overwhelming part of script analysis that should have taken place before you even got into developing your character. And so I, I thought to myself while we were sitting in that restaurant today, that's all the things that were going on. And I said, this would be a great episode for season one, episode seven, script analysis. So you know what we do. Let's just jump right into it. And so here we are. So with this script analysis, um, again, um, we won't be able to do a t totality of things with the script analysis, but I want to just talk about some certain things, maybe just three points. OK, so um, the first point that I want to talk about is let's just talk about um, the script itself and let's just say the setting the setting of the script. Because most of us, um, if you just getting in, I know I did this myself. I was only concerned about the, the um, about my lines and I, you know, I wanted to get in and I just wanted to learn my lines. All right. And this is what we do, many of us do as a novice actor. And so here we are at this point, when we're in this diner today and I'm sitting here taking in the ambiance, and I remember a conversation that my wife and I also had yesterday. And that conversation came out to be simply, what would happen if they remodeled the restaurant? And my wife instinctively said, it wouldn't be the same. It wouldn't have the same feel. And that would, right there was it born a thought in my mind because you're right. So if you're not in the presence of mind, when you read that script, you must first understand before you can even get to your character is reading everything about the script, understanding where the writer was. So it doesn't matter if you have one line, two lines or a whole paragraph or you have four or five pages. What I'm saying to you is, is that it's very important in that script analysis, whether you're going by scene by scene or you're taking the entire um script. What I'm saying is it's very important for you to understand everything about that script. Um, where, when, what, how, um, all the other, you know, W's and H's and what is the want, you know, what is the want, what is the overall want, what is the message? Okay. What is the plot of the film? We have to know all of these things because, um, I'll use one example now in your script analysis for me. Um, someone with a criminal justice background and has played the major parts in courtrooms, law enforcement, probation, corrections, um, armed security, all these things like that. When I go to look at a film, 
the first thing I'm looking at, it keys me in on the people that are playing the criminal justice professionals. So we're going to take the first one today. What we're going to take is a police department. All right. So a lot of films, when you're watching the police department, before you can even get into the character development of the officers, detectives, captains, sergeants, and all of those, you know, rank and, and, and uniforms and all those things. First of all, we have to look at what is the presence of the police department. Now, you must understand there's going to be a difference between a sheriff department, a police department, um, a small town hub. You understand what I'm saying? In a major city. That's one of the first things that you have to understand. You might say, well, why does it make a difference as a police department? Well, it also plays a very important part because it also lets you know how the players move, how big it is. What are the resources available? You might see a number of cars. You might see a number of trucks. You may see dogs. You may not see any. You might see motorcycles and you may not see anything. And so depending on what time period it is, you could see horses outside roped up. All right. So this is why it's very important. Now, the other thing that you need to do is not even still going to character development. You're talking about the script analysis. You're talking about the time, the place, the location. You're looking at it. Is this somewhere to where there's an old building, a wooded building, a brick building, vinyl siding? Is it a one room apartment? What is it? Where are the bars located? All right. So a lot of times you'd be surprised that doing your script analysis, you can tell who has really done their homework, who has done a little homework, who has done a little bit more than a little homework and who has exhausted very much of their, 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 their time and their efforts to really make sure they detail things out. Now, why is it important? It's very important. Sometimes you come in and we walk into, we see movies where they walk into police departments so they walk into uh, places where the law enforcement officers are and they walk straight back to the investigation room. Now, I don't know. I've never seen it. I've never seen any department anywhere all over the U.S. and other states and countries that I've been in where you can walk through the front door and walk all the way back to the sales or walk all the way back to where they're in the investigation room. It just does not happen. Um, I've seen movies to where you portray to where family members come in and everybody's crying and it almost looked like somebody about to have a baby because the, 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 the police station, the interrogation room is set up like a hospital room. It's like you walk in, like you're actually already on the floor and everybody's walking in and everybody has the availability to walk in and out. And then you have people that's being interrogated in a room and the family has access to it. Where does that happen? So in your script analysis, these are all the things that you're going to be looking at. So you so it's about a mood. It's about a feel. It's about really capturing because the, 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 the scene set up, the setting and the mood is telling the story without anyone speaking. So this is before you get to character development. So if you want to talk about a character development, let's talk about the scene development. And so in your script analysis, it's going to cover all of that. It's going to understand what is going on inside of the police station. All right. So your script analysis is going to make sure that you've done the homework. So, you know, um, are there certain flags? There should be certain insignias up. There should be certain pictures and maybe there shows uh, a rank and file of past precinct commanders or captains or chiefs and understand that every department doesn't have a precinct commander like yours truly as I play on Law and Order SVU. All right. And so you understand that if you're dealing in a sheriff's office, you're not going to see a precinct commander. Now, you'll probably see a captain, but then you got to understand that where you watch Law and Order uh, SVU and Law and Order and Organized Crimes and, and, and Chicago PD and all these other law enforcement shows where you see a captain and the captain is running the entire department. That's not going to happen in the sheriff department because the sheriff is the key piece. The sheriff is the head. He's generally the head of the county, whatever county he is, he's in. The sheriff, sometimes they call him the high sheriff. And this is why you must also get uh, familiar in your script analysis. You must be very certain about your word choices. All right. 
And this is what is happening in a, in a police department or a sheriff department. You must know the difference and you must know the difference in the ranks and, and the insignias that are on the collars and, and, and all the other things. Um, another important thing to know is, is where badges are placed. Everything on the uniform because believe me, from department to department, things change. And so there must be a uniform um, a uniform totality of all the officers that come into play that you see, everyone must be looking. Now, let's also cover this. I can't tell you the number of times that I've seen a misplacement of um, where handcuffs are worn, how, how your weapons are worn, um, and also be very familiar with the terminology, okay? Because um, in the military, in the military, they don't call it, uh, we don't call it guns and bullets. No. You, so you have your weapon and you have your ammo. Okay? Weapon and ammo. Police department, you may hear guns and bullets. So you got to, that's what I'm saying. So in your script analysis, know what you're talking about. Now, um, some of the big topics now, I don't want to get totally off this, but um, some of the things when you're talking about an actor's worth, um, these are the things. There are people like myself that have real life experience. They have we have the educational background piece to uh, substantiate it. We have the real life experience. Now, so when you're talking about an actor's worth and as far as hiring me for that role, we have to talk a little different than you would probably hire someone else because you're talking about my acting craft, your my, my and my level of acting craft, my real life experience, and my education. That's going to bring about um, a greater knowledge of how things are. Even now when we start talking about the character development that entices or enhances the script analysis. All right. So that's just some of what we're talking about. And when we're talking about a police department. And now um, the last thing that I want to say is, is there's a misconception, too, about um, a lot of times when you go in police departments, you're walking around. You, you look at the officers walking around in movies and um especially a lot of independents, and you may see a lot of officers have their guns on and they have um, a suspect here or someone that's been uh, being interviewed or you have, um, you just have people all around. You got officers, you have people that have been arrested, detainees and things like that. And you got officers all walking around with their with their guns on now a careful script analysis would tell you that if you study police departments generally before you come in your gun is in a lockbox. why because it's safety you know what happens when someone gets a weapon inside of that precinct it could be a very bad situation a very bad situation even when you're going into the um if you arrested someone and you're, you're you're driving around and you're going to you're taking them to jail or the jail that's connected to the police station or the sheriff's sheriff's office now what you're going to do is again your weapon is going in the lockbox okay this is some way to do it your weapon goes in a lockbox because you're inside a, a, what they call the Sally Port. You're inside there. It's a contained place. It's a secure place. You've taken off your weapon prior to taking out the inmate now or the person that you arrested or the detainee before you actually walk them into the doorway of the jail. See, and those things make a difference because when law enforcement personnel or maybe even military personnel or anybody that's worked in the criminal justice field, when they see that, even down to probation and pro, uh, parole officer, when they see that, they go... Why would he be taking his weapon inside of a, a jail? It makes no sense. It, it just doesn't happen. So we're looking at, well, who really did their homework? The script analysis has this all out of play. So now this seems like a, a romedy instead of a drama. Okay. So just be conscious of that. Um, now let's just move on to topic two, script analysis. Right. Let's go to point two. Let's, let's talk about the script analysis as when it comes down to um, let's talk about this diner that I was talking about today. So um, when we were in the diner today, there's, there's things going on. 
you got to look at this. Okay. Um, so your script analysis, what type of diner is it again? What's the time period? What's the setting? But one thing for sure, we know it's like much like what we call uh, down south, we call it greasy spoons. I guess they call it that in the city. And so when you're, when you're looking at this, you're looking at a diner, you, you think about the things that are in there before you even think about the people. You look at the setting, you look at the colors, you're looking at um, what type of grill is it? You know, you, you, you can't have a enhanced grill when that's not normally what's in a diner and it depends on what age it is you know you're not going to find a happy days grill when you find the funds the funds on a modern day thing like this you know on a set like or your script is saying that it is 2023 surely it's not the same your doorway is your inches does it have swinging doors or you just have a regular door come on we have to think about those things so you know in script analysis it sets the pace it's not saying anything, but it's saying an a, it's it's saying a whole lot. It is saying a whole lot. So you may call it and just think it's just scene or the, or, or set preparation or props. But I'm telling you, your script analysis sets all of these things up because it gives you the feel um, of the character. Now watch this. Now where your character development comes in, it on top of your screen analysis, your script analysis is I'm looking that when I walk in now. If I can even close my eyes and think about it while I'm sitting there, what's going on? I may not be saying anything, but there's some things going on. I hear pouring water. What is my attention to the water that's pouring? Someone's pouring water. Are the waitresses wearing heels? Is the waitresses chewing gum? Is it annoying me or is it just something I'm dealing with? There's hot coffee porn. Do I smell it? So your script analysis, I'm going to be reading all of this to see what's really going on. And it should display it out. Now, here's the thing. Now, a lot of times you see it and I never see anyone. Hardly do I ever see anyone swat a fly. It's to me, everything, even today, I won't call the name of the restaurant, but even today and every time we go in, it's crazy because I feel like the flies are a customer too. You know what I'm saying? You're bound to see one or two flies, small flies, big flies. All right. And it's like they're, but they're a part of the setting. You can even call it a part of the ambiance. It's like, that's what I was saying. If you, if we turn around and we rebuilt the restaurant, it takes away, it doesn't have the same feel and it takes away the, the mood of the, of the actor to understand what's going on and a well-written script encompasses all of these things and then where I'm able to build the background. Maybe I had my, you know, when I look at my past, present and future time in there, maybe this was the first restaurant that my parents brought me to, to, to um, celebrate my first birthday. Maybe this is the time where I first had that nice cherry Coke and I remember taking it all down, you know, like almost off one sip. And that's a great memory. So while I'm sitting there at an older age, um, as the script analysis would have it, as I'm sitting here at an older age in this restaurant, maybe it's the time now the way I'm a football star in high school and I have a girlfriend and I'm sitting here and at a, at a, at a, at a, at a, at a glance back or at a, at the, a few seconds of me sitting there, I go back. My mind, and you can see my mind. I don't have to say anything, but my mind takes you back. And even the audience will feel my mind going back when that waitress sets that cherry Coke on the table and seeing me glance at it. The actor feels it and the audience feels like, oh, I remember. I remember that he's sitting at his favorite table. That's why the table was so important. That's why the placement of the cherry Coke was so important. And the waitress brought out two straws and not one straw. Why? Because that's what happened when I was young. And I'm able to connect the screen analysis, the script analysis of when this thing happened, how it happened. I had two straws, not one. And that's how I was able to guzzle down the soda so fast. 
You understand what I'm saying? So this is why I continue to tell you that it makes a difference for you to study the script so you understand the players inside the diner. You have the cook, you have the owner, you have the person calling for the food, the person's taking the order, you have the bus boys that are busting the tables, you have the waitresses. You, 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 you How are they dressed? How are they moving about? Maybe you're the terminology they're using. Hey, hun. Hey, babe. Hey, sugar. Hey, sweetheart. Hey, bub, it, it all makes a difference and it goes into how you respond. All right, that's point two. Okay, and here we are. We're going to close out with point three. And today what I want to use as the setting for the script analysis, what I want to use now is I want to use the courtroom. Um, there's a lot of thing that goes on, especially when you're talking about your character development and understanding your script analysis that's very important is that um, understanding who are the players in the courtroom. Yes, this is an actual thing. Who are the players in the courtroom? You have people like your judge, you have the court stenographer, you have um, you have Madam DA or Mr. DA, whoever the DA is or the prosecutor. You have the defense attorney, you have the defendant, okay? You have the victim, you have the investigators, you have uh, expert witnesses, you have the audience, okay? You have the 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 uh, the jurors. You have the bailiffs. You have so many people. Now, what? It, why does this matter? It matters because in your script, everybody has a part that they are playing in the setting. So when you walk in, there is a feel on the character. Now, you must also know the placement. Where does the prosecutor sit, or the or the um, and the defense attorney? All right. Most of the time, your prosecutors, when you're looking as you're facing, as I'm facing the camera, that would be like us facing the judge. OK, so your prosecutor would be over here or your D.A., which would be my right side, your left side. And over here, you would have the defense, which is the you, you, your co-defendants are your defendants, okay? So, And with the defense attorney and their team, which is to my left and to your immediate right, all right? So, and then, like I said, your jurors, um, I've seen some courthouses where they're on the left. Uh, generally, your, your jurors are generally, eh, they're generally placed on the right side by um, the, um, the prosecutor or the DA, all right? And then your, your, Audience is set in the back. I've, I've seen some courthouses set in some crazy ways. Now, depending on what time it is, the time period, again, you could have plexiglass in between, um, you know, the, the witness stand and and behind the um, behind the players of the court and the audience. And some are literally I've seen to where you can reach up and touch the D.A. and you can reach up and touch the victim as well as the defendant. Now, what's so important about your character development inside your script analysis is understanding which way the defendant comes in the court, which way the witnesses come witnesses come into the court. You got to understand that plays a tremendous part. So when you're shooting your films or you're acting in a film, it puts you in a in a place. Now, imagine or imagine, imagine if you are the defendant, someone, because your script analysis is going to say what you've been charged with. Now, watch this. This is the difference between your, your, your textual analysis, your word choice, um, your settings, and why it's so important in your script analysis understanding, because it could be something as far as now going back to the defendant, he could be in there for burglary. OK, but if you look up the definition of burglary and when it was when it was going on, time makes a difference between whether it was B and E breaking and entering or whether it was burglary. Right. Generally during your daytime before the um, the nighttime sets in or sunset, everything up until before then is B and E. But anything that happens at night is like a burglary. Um, it's just something simple. So in your script analysis, if you're portraying that this 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 criminal, whether it be man, woman or whatever, has broken into a residence or broken into something, it makes a difference because of the charge. No matter if he's getting off or on, because that's going to be how everything else builds up um, into your charges and how the prosecutor um 
proceeds with their case and how the defense attorney proceeds with the case. You got to learn to you got to learn to understand even what discovery is. The discovery is a sharing of evidence between the two. All right, between the two parties, the the prosecutors and the defense attorney. Um, and then you got to learn if it's legal or illegal not to share. All those things makes a difference because now it's going to be the feeling to when that that defendant is sitting at that table he doesn't have to say a word because generally his defense attorney or her defense attorney is speaking for them. And you need to be able to understand when you hear such things like, well, I was charged with burglary. Now, a, a, especially someone that's familiar with the system. OK, so he's sitting there and he may just make a most he just may, may make a simple little gesture. Because he already knows that the, the, the case just got tilted. In his, fa in his favor because they charged him with burglary. So now all the evidence has to support a burglary. So when you're doing your script analysis, you have to make sure that you have the right terminology, the right charges. It would be good for whatever state you're in to get a, um, if you're in North Carolina, get yourself a North Carolina crimes book. If you're in Georgia, a Georgia crimes book, New York, to understand how the charges are, what are the elements, what are the torques, um, yeah, all, all those things. What are the elements of the crime? What are the torques and, 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 and all these little subdivisions and what makes the difference? Because it could be the difference of wrongfully convicting someone as so many people are done. All right. I just met a gentleman that was wrongfully convicted and served 20 years. I just met him like last week. All right. And, and another one that served six years who was wrongfully committed. Evidence was overturned. So what I want to tell you, and this is a good thing to know, too, in your script analysis, it's not always about who is right. It's who can present the best argument, who can present the best um, evidence. And that's generally who wins. So when you're doing your script analysis, don't leave it so wide open. This is where you really got to do your homework and understand the players of the court, understanding that the judge also, too, has parameters as much as we hear crimes going on and we think that a person should get this much time or shouldn't get this much time the judge has like a placard he has like a um uh, for lack of better terms he has like a boundary he has like notes up there that's a boundary to say how much time he can give for certain crimes he just can't do it on his own it's much just like the um uh oh i just drew a blank the magistrate. It's much like the magistrate when you maybe get arrested and you're trying to post bond. This is before you go to court and all of that. And the magistrate just doesn't set a bond. They have a guideline. They have a preliminary guideline to which they go through for how much they can actually set your bond for. So and and it also has some different criterias too. You may commit maybe the same crime, but there are some different elements on why your bond is higher and all of these things i say again is very important in your script analysis for you to detail a great story now um where it comes into your character development plays a part is that when you're in there again understand the terminology that is it in your state do they call it a prosecutor or is the term used as a district attorney it makes a difference. And when you're telling the story, it makes it more believable. And this is what you understand. Same as a victim. A victim needs to know like all these things that are going on and then how you react. Even the crowd or the, the public as they're sitting in the courtroom. Don't forget there's officers around the courtroom. Don't just have your officers around. Under, make them understand. Know the difference in your script on whether you're in civil court, district court, or supreme court. Okay. Some of you probably call it superior or superior court, supreme court. All right. Know the difference because they're going to be conducted difference. There are a set of judges that have been um, elected or selected or appointed for the district court. There are a set of judges that have been um, appointed for the supreme court. Um, there are magistrates that serve as a judge in civil court. Know the difference between what's a civil offense and what turns it into a criminal? It's a dollar amount. So this is why your script analysis in the courtroom is such, it plays such a great part. Now, when I see, I see officers walk around in the courthouse and I watch how they bring 
um, defendants in, I already say that's a safety hazard. Now, I won't call the name of the county because I have a close relationship with um, some people, family members, officers, and everybody that was in this county. However, I have a real life experience to where, and I won't say they were carelessly but doing this, but in the... Um, in in the, uh, in, in the in the in the in the order of doing their business, I'll, I'll just say that in the commission of doing their duties, um, there was an inmate who was in court who got a hold of one of the deputies' weapon, and he killed one or two people and he injured one or two people with that weapon. So. What I'm telling you is, is that it does make a difference in your script analysis on where you're putting your your bailiffs, understanding who's bringing them in. You're going to have highway patrol or state patrol in there. You're going to have all you're going to have probation and parole officers. You're going to have um, JDMs. You're going to have all these players in court that that are overseeing certain cases and you may just think that these are regular people in there, but it makes a difference when you talk about the presentation that your script script uh, analysis is going to present to make it feel like a, a real courtroom. So on our show, Law & Order SVU, um, as I was told, and um, I, I believe it's still true, that in our core group of, of actors... When you start getting down to, you know, like Mariska Hargitay, Ice T, Peter, just just Kevin. Uh, when when you start getting down to these players, the 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 main body. I am the only one that has like real life law enforcement, um, real life law enforcement experience, and so I've been there and I've talked to them about it. And watch, this is how the wordplay. I remember on my on my debut last uh, in July of 2022 when I was debuted as the precinct commander and we had some, you know, we have some offset conversations and, and I talked about these things and I even had some talks with the director because um, understanding what was happening, the script analysis and under, the way I understood it from my real life experience didn't carry over. For the main actors that were already on the show. Okay. Why? Because they haven't had the law enforcement. And this is not a knock to them. This is words out of their mouth. Ice-T told me himself. He says, I can tell. I, I saw how it affected you when you said the one line. And if you saw the episode, there was a gang that came on the subway train. And they ended up raping. They, they, they just massacred this family. And they raped a 14-year-old girl. And... We, we, we continue to exchange. The beats of our exchanges were going back and forth. But when they asked me, were there any other victims? There was a beat to where I had to say, 14-year-old daughter. And when I said just the 14-year-old daughter, it shifted. And when you watch that episode, you can see. Now, before I took a longer pause when we were doing rehearsals and the director had to come to me and said, Akil, just to say the line. And I got to admit, this is my first time. This is my debut on uh, this long standing show, the longest standing um, show. And I guess you would say I was in my feelings. But yes, I was in my real life feelings of of really connecting my character development to this real life episode because I've dealt with kids being harmed, infants being killed and, and things like that in my, in my background. And so that immediately kicked in when I thought about this 14 year old being assaulted. And so every time I got to that line, I felt it. Even in my self tape audition, I felt it. And he said, and, uh, Norberto Barber, which is the, uh, director of that episode, he came to me, he said, and this is for for your reference. This would be season twenty four of Law and Order SVU, and it would be the second episode. All right. And so you you I, and I can feel it now. I, I can feel that 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 itchiness, that that tension now. Just thinking about it. And so he said, just just see it. And so I I did. And I remember back doing one of the takes 
when Ice Ice T and I were walking down and I was telling him, he's like, man, don't don't sweat it. Everybody goes through it. It comes on the show. And then I remember Mariska saying the same thing to me. She was like, don't worry about it. Every guest star when they come on the show, they have to learn the beat. And it really wasn't about the beat, even though I had to learn that the pace is much faster than the other shows that I've been on. But it was about what I felt. And Ice-T said, and I was telling him, so I was explaining, to, not an explanation, but him and I were discussing it because they know my background. And I was saying to him, I said, man, Ice, I said, you know, I felt this with this situation. And he literally said to me, he says, he says, I can tell. He said, I can tell you've done this before and you had this experience. He said, because he felt it. He said, and he heard it when I started talking about that 14 year old being assaulted. And he says, hey man, just do it how you feel it. And I literally did. So on our next tapes, I did it. Naberto, uh Barber, the director, he was like, this is it. He said, that's it. Akil, you're a professional. And so on all the episodes uh, that I'm in, it's the same thing. So I always remember that. So I, I, I have this 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 thing, even on the next episodes that I were on, um, we have similar situations. I haven't faced a situation yet that I haven't had some type of real life experience with. And it just takes over me. And sometimes I find myself speaking out loud, which I've talked about before in other um, views. So, But I don't want to keep, keep this going. I just want to tell you again that it's so important that even before you build that character development understand the script analysis so writers make sure that you're actually doing your homework and understand your settings because even on your one page there's so much that goes into your one page to set up to set it up all right and this will help your actors get more into the script and understand now actors is also on you to read every punctuation every word and yes when i say punctuation is very important the textual analysis, um, the word choice, understanding the difference of where you are. If you are in the police station, the courthouse, a school classroom, um, church or whatever, understand that the terminology and the word choices could be very different. And the choice of the word, those words can throw off your entire film. All right. So listen, man, this has been great. Um, there's so much more I wanted to get into, but I was trying not to go too in depth, but I just wanted to give you um, just an overview of it. So we'll be black with just the conclusion. Yes. And so we're at the end of our episode season. Well, season one, episode seven, script analysis. Now, what I hope that you've understood and when I while I try to separate and make you have an understanding or to get you to have an understanding of the difference between your character development, but more focus mostly on your script analysis, is that you understand the overlay, understand the writing of the writer, but understand what the writer is wanting, what he's trying to do to get it, because that's these are the same things that the actor must do. But in the script analysis, it's very important that your script has all of these things that the right that the, the the that the actor can pull from. If the actor doesn't have anything to pull from, it's going to be hard because what will happen is you will basically end up with the same character in the same uh, in, in other films and in, in other films. You'll have the same you'll have the same person. He doesn't have any different experience to draw from. Nothing's different in your script. You, because you wrote 15 scripts and they sold or they've done okay or you know, they made it out of something or maybe won an award or made it to a film festival, you think that's the way it's supposed to do. And you haven't done any other homework and it destroys your credibility as a filmmaker. Um, there'll be certain people that continue to buy in, but after a while, people get to looking like, this doesn't make sense. Out of the 15 films or the 20 films they made, it's about time now that they started hiring some people with some uh, background that understand what's supposed to be done, the placement of your weapon, um, the courtroom, how things should go, uniform wearing, and, and, and to be able to write that all in. How an officer get dressed in the morning? How, what, what happens in the morning when the, before the judge even comes out? What happens in a classroom? What happens in a diner? How do they prepare? Does your script give the actors what they need? And what about the crew? And what about, yeah, what about the crew? What about, 
What about props? Do they know what props they even need to have if your, if your script does not contain all that? So make sure that when you are doing a careful script analysis that you're reading it all so you have an understanding of what to draw from. All right. So listen again, this has been your host, Akil Shakur, and this is season one, episode seven, script analysis with empowered minds. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next. All my bills still do. Keep pushing, bro. I'm up to my last breath gone. Past left alone. Till I see my king sitting high on the throne. Focus is what I'm on. By any means, homes used to say if I don't go, I'll put it to my dome. I've been chasing that money from the bottom to the top. Try to be the billionaire before the cash get drop. And I know in my heart, man, I want to live right. Got right with my king. Now we tie it out. If it don't kill you, it's gonna make you stronger. Whatever it is, it won't last much longer. Trouble won't last always. Trouble won't last always. If it don't kill you, it's gonna make you stronger. Whatever it is, it won't last much longer. Trouble won't last always. Trouble won't last always. From my to your neck of the woods, I've been the truth. If I said that, I did that. Never want you for the booth. I was too smooth for nicks and dimes. Love blue collar crime. If you need it, I had it. It's Sean's the credit lines. If I died, I was on my way to hell, bro. I was living foul in the